What's up YouTube? We are back with another awesome Moto vlog. In today's video we are addressing the GX470 backup camera. Let's go. So this is probably the most requested and talked about topics in the comments section, especially after that Phoenix Automotive head unit installation. The OEM backup camera is not compatible with the Phoenix Automotive head unit. Uh, there's a difference in voltage there. You could do a voltage converter and get that working, but I decided to go with a more upgraded, newer camera. So for the camera selection, I went with an HD camera that I found on Amazon. This one was right around $30. The cool thing about this camera is if you can see there's two hoops here. One of them is green and one of them is white. So cutting or leaving the white cable on here will keep or remove the backup camera guidelines that will display on the screen. And then the green one I believe reverses the orientation so you can use this as, either as a backup camera or a front facing camera and you cut that depending on if you want it to be mounted in the front of the back. So the cool thing about this is it's an HD camera so I'm hoping to see a little bit of an improvement compared to the OEM camera that's in there that's now you know 50, over 15 years old at this point so I think it's just a good idea to upgrade this and then it should be a little bit more plug and play with the Phoenix Automotive head unit. This is a hundred and seventy degrees of visibility so I think that should be nice. I don't know what the OEM one is it's probably somewhere around the same but I like that it's a wide angle camera. Uh, the other things that this comes with so we got some adapters here one for connecting the video and power up to the camera uh, another one for getting the voltage supply power to the camera and then the third cable harness is a pretty long one this is the you know, RCA cable that goes all the way from the head unit back to the back of the car and connects to the camera for displaying the video this will carry the video signal to the head unit and I really hope this is the right length. I'm going to go out there and test it out. And this red wire that's included in here, this is embedded in the cable itself and it's kind of spliced out on each end. This is the trigger. So this triggers the backup camera signal into the back of the head unit so that it'll display the video. And what triggers it is the reverse lights on the GX470, the ones that are on both sides of the license plate. When you put the car in reverse, those lights turn on. It sends the trigger signal up to the Phoenix Automotive head unit, and then it knows to display the video from the camera. I've got a, a nice solution for coupling the cables. These things are called tap splices. I've used these in the past, and I plan on using them for this install. What's nice about these is... It requires less uh, cutting of wires. So as you can see, this is what the tap splice looks like. You've got two channels. So one of them will be the wire you want to tap, and then the other will be the wire you want to tap to. And there's this metal prong in the middle. And what that does is it, it actually presses down inside of here. And I, I can waste this one just to kind of show it. You push that down, and it's got little guides inside of there. Yeah, not sure if you can see, but it pushed this metal clip down in and that cuts through the sheathing of the wire. And then you click this over, like so. And now you have two wires spliced together. And it makes for a clean, uh, no solder splicing. So I've used these on my motorcycle for an aftermarket taillight module. And I've had it in there for about six years now using these splicers that came with the kit. It was the first time I'd ever used them. And the motorcycle goes through a whole lot of shaking and jostling around, uh, more so than the GX is probably going to go through. And so if those things held up for six years just fine, I think it's going to work great for the backup camera. And it's going to make this whole process a lot quicker to install if we don't have to go cutting wires and soldering or wire nutting things. I just think this is a nice, clean solution for that. So let's get out into the garage and start taking apart the back panels. All right, so first things first, we need to get this whole plastic paneling off. Just kind of be delicate with this because these vehicles are getting a little bit older and some of these clips can break. So first you want to pull apart this tool kit. 
get that out of the way. There's some clips over here that you pull up. And there's a Phillips head screw up underneath here once you pull the clips off. There's clips that pull down under this handle. And they pull kind of straight out. Pretty easy to pull off. Once you pull this handle off, you should be good. Next, you want to start pulling up these pieces up around the top. Just kind of pull, and these clips will undo it themselves. Once you get that out of the way, the whole thing pulls down very easily, all in one piece. So I will say that there used to be a plastic covering on here, and it looks like I'm assuming somebody who owned this GX before me has been in here this motor which this kind of looks a little bit newer so I'm wondering if this was replaced at one point in time and somebody came in here and just removed all that plastic that was here um, and when you take yours apart you may have some plastic here that's held on by glue our main focus here is this connector here this connector is what goes to the backup camera so the next thing I want to do before I go measuring anything is I do want to just fully take out the backup camera itself we're essentially going to take off this entire black trim uh, piece above the license plate. If you can see in here, there's a little pin. So we'll push these pins through the back of the metal here, and that'll pull out that black trim piece. And once we have that removed, we'll have access to the bolts on the camera so that we can unbolt it and take it out. So there we go. So this whole piece just kind of comes off, pulls right out of the back there. All right, so once you have this piece off, you can see you have a lot more room here to get to this back camera. And I want to zoom in and show, I want to take out the two screws on both sides here. Yeah, there we go. So what we'll do is we'll unconnect this connector here and that'll give us the ability to feed the cable out through. Alright, so we can feed this down through. And there you have, this is the old camera. Alright, so there were four little screws on each corner of the OEM backup camera. And I undid those so that you can... Oh. Wow, I just pulled that whole thing apart. Good thing is, is we don't need this anymore. Oh, okay, that's just a quick disconnect on the PCB there. So, we don't need that anymore, but what I want to do is kind of want to seal this up. I wonder if I have any grommets that I can use for it, but essentially what I want to do is put this back in place because I want to run the wire directly through here for the new backup camera and kind of seal this up so that we don't have any uh, water or weathering getting in there so kind of take that apart and put the screws that hold this back in uh, in the original spot where it's at so then we'll now have uh, kind of a place to guide our wire through and there you can see mounted back up in the factory location so a couple of days have gone by and I've been driving and assessing the location of mounting this camera and I will say that I want to change things up a bit. Um, shout out to my friend Robert. He located the camera in this location. And I will say that this location is a good spot to put it if you are a non-nav and you don't already have a backup cam. So one of the issues with where this mounting location is for cars with the backup camera is you have to pull this out far enough so that you're not hitting this black plastic on the OEM camera or where the OEM camera was and the issue with that is is now with this pulled out you can see that it's no longer underneath this sill and rain just hits it so it sucks really bad for driving in the rain I was just using it the other day and it was raining and this got wet and the lens just was pretty much unusable so this location of mounting to the plastic up underneath here will work fine for people who don't already have a backup cam because 
when you don't have a backup camera, th this black plastic piece from the old cam is not there, and this whole piece under here is solid, and you can mount to that very easily. And that's what my friend Robert did. It's a legitimate place to mount it, especially in his condition, because he does not have a, a backup camera here, so he's got a solid piece of black plastic, and he can recess this camera in a little bit further. Um, so I'll link Robert's stuff below for any of you guys who have the uh, non-nav, non-backup cam setup so you can kind of see what he did. Um, but I came up with a different solution that I think works really well for the rest of us who have already have the OEM backup camera and you're trying to relocate. Um, and I found this plate. I actually really like this one because as you can see it has the mounts on here to relocate this camera to this bracket. The only thing that will be sticking out is the centerpiece and the camera will be covering that up so I think it will look very clean and it will have a much better look. So this will mount up here like this, we'll re relocate the camera and then the camera should sit back underneath here far enough so that rain doesn't drip down and hit it. I also have a test, I'm going to test out two different grommet types, went over to Lowe's and found this is about a three quarter of an inch uh, hole. I want to seal this up once I run the cable through and just kind of have a nice clean professional look to it. So I'm going to test out these two different grommets and figure out which one works best. And then I'll link the part numbers to whatever grommet I decide to go with down in the description. And also all of this stuff that I bought, the links will be in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and unmount the camera from this location, mount it to the new bracket test out these grommets and see which one works and we'll see if we can get a much cleaner solution here. Alright so for grommets I went with these Hillman grommets. This is a cool little piece of plastic and this just matches the three quarter inch hole that's in here. So I just did a little bit of a test fit here and I can see that this is going to fit in here. And so I'm going to pull it back out and I, I'm going to drill a hole in this piece of plastic. So once I drill the hole in the piece of plastic, I will feed this cable through and then wire it up into here. There we go. Alright, so first I'm going to go through here and put this little grommet into place. So now you can see we have a nice clean uh, seal here and then we can feed the cable up through here. It'll just be a little bit better of a look and not so uh, thrown together. Not sure how well you can see it but I'm just going to take this bracket flip it 180 like this and screw that in and that should buy us just a little bit more Base. All right, so I just wanted to take this off and show it a little bit better. There's a screw here and here, and I took this front faceplate and I spun it 180 degrees so now it's facing the other way, and it pulls it in a little bit further. So I think that'll enable it to clear being underneath this little sill. So I'm just going to mount the camera back up to here and we'll see if that gives us some better clearance. So this is a much cleaner solution. You can see we are now tucked up underneath this trim piece, so now rain falling straight down should not hit the lens. Uh, you might get some, but it is a much better scenario now. And I'm really digging the way this grommet looks. It, it seals up that hole, looks a lot cleaner. I'm just a much bigger fan of this solution. But like I said, the solution that Robert went with is the way you want to go if you don't already have a backup camera setup because you won't have this black piece up here and I believe Robert mounted the or ran the wire through one of these other holes here so I'll link his stuff down in the description so you can kind of see what he did if you are in a scenario of not having a backup camera but this looks so much better now and I'm glad that it took a couple of days to test out the other approach because you can just see that this works really well Flipping this bracket that was in here holding the camera around 180 degrees was key in getting it to fit underneath this sill so that you could get it out of the rain. So that looks a lot better. So in general, I think this is a good scenario. 
enables you to see uh, my screw up and you can see how to not do it. It gives you an alternative if you've got the non-nav system without a backup camera. This is one of the main reasons I do these videos. Uh, I'm out here kind of failing for you guys so that you can see what not to do and now you can kind of streamline your process when you go to install it so you can do this a lot faster than I have done it and you know exactly what to do with all of these pieces and it should make your life a lot easier uh, by watching this video so hopefully this helps you guys out um, hit a like down below if this helped you out in solving this backup camera mounting issue um, I think this is a really clean solution and like I said this will be hidden by the license plate so you won't even see that and I think it'll just look really cool. So I went ahead and did some testing. What I did is I hooked on to one of the grounds here. Actually there's a terminal over here. I connected to this and then I took my DMM here and I set it on the volts DC setting. What I did is I turned the car on, pulled the e-brake and put the car in reverse so that triggered the reverse lights here and I went ahead and double checked this red wire this red wire here reads 12 volts DC so that's the voltage we need for this camera this camera is a 12 to 24 volt camera so the cool thing is is we can kinda cut back this outer sheathing here so we can use those wire taps to tap into the wires here and crimp in the camera power and also the trigger that needs to go to the front of the car. So let's do that right now. Alright, so there's a few things we need to do. Right here is the cable from the camera. There is a power and also a video connector that comes with the kit. What you need to do is just connect in. It's a keyed connector. You just need to connect this in. So now you have Coming off of the camera, you've got your yellow for your video and your red, which is your power to the camera. So next, what you got to do is there's another cable assembly here, which, which I, th I think I'm just going to leave this cable tied together to keep things kind of in place. I don't really need all of this length. It's excessive for where I'm going to be installing this, but one side here has a a regular DC type connector and you'll just plug this into the red so now this is going to give you power so what you need to do here is you've got a black and a red wire so I'm going to take and I'm going to utilize the fact that we have access to this rear reverse light and so I'm going to take one of these crimpers so I'm going to start with the ground first what I'm going to do is put the ground wire inside the lower portion here that doesn't feed all the way through this is just going to get crimped by that metal piece that goes down in here and so I just kind of got to hold that through put it around the other cable here actually it probably makes the most sense to put it on here first and then slide the cable you want to connect in there and then what you do is you push that in and you clamp down here on this connector and you can you can feel it cut through the cable and now if I pull on this I can't pull it out so we got the splice on there feed it from the top down onto the red cable and then feed the red wire through down onto there like that and that should create a solid connection between the two so you can see pulling on that and it does not pull through so we got a nice connection and this is our on the other end we got our 12 volt DC this will plug right into our camera so what I'm gonna do is just kinda zip tie all this stuff together so the only thing, once you got this all zip tied up here, kind of just use these other wiring harnesses to clip everything together and hold it up into place nicely. And then the last two connections you'll make is you got this video line for your camera to go up to the front head unit. 
plug that in and then this is your trigger and this needs to connect to the trigger source which is going to be for us we want a 12 volt trigger of the rear backup lights coming on so if you connect this up to the 12 volts the same way you did for the power this will trigger the camera and send a signal up to the Phoenix unit so that it'll show you the backup camera view. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is I have this cable that needs to go to the front of the vehicle. I have it fed through the door panel from where I have it connected. And then the main thing you want to do is you want to put it through this protected boot. So this boot keeps cables from getting pinched in the door. And really all you do is you kind of just pull it apart and the cable itself is a little rubber grommet so it's got a bunch of cables running through it really what you want to do is just feed in your your cable up through here and you just gotta stretch it and get it to fit up in there it's actually pretty pliable material which makes it not so bad for fitting this in and another thing you want to do is you want to pop up this plastic piece down below here so that you can get into this side and uh, feed the cable through. So now once you have that you can kind of pull this panel alright so once you have this cable fed all the way through you want to just replace these grommets there we go. So now we've got this cable and the best thing to do is take the shortest path and try to just tuck it along the edges of this entire trim and we're going to work our way up to the front of the vehicle. And so really tucking this cable in and running it up to the front of the car is probably one of the easiest parts of the job. You really can just go along the edge of this plastic trim and if you just kind of tuck your fingers up under you can kind of feel and tuck the cable in pretty easily up under there and just kind of run it up along this whole surface. This whole thing actually pops up nicely so you can kind of run it up underneath there, tuck it in and then you can kind of pop these pieces back down like that. So kind of run that. I'm gonna run it up along this edge and then up through there. And all right, so now we're up front. I've got the cable ran all the way up to about here and I need to basically just feed it up through this plastic piece here. So I was able to feed this through enough and I can actually see the cable right here. So I'm gonna pull it up with a screwdriver. There we go. So now Got the cable in here. So what I like to do is I like to get a, a pillow and set it here in the center. So when you pull the Phoenix head unit out, you're not letting it uh, the screen rest on the shift knob, which could scratch the screen. All right, so what you want to do is you want to locate, there's a yellow RCA here that's called camera. You want to find that and plug it in. And then you need to locate something that is a descriptor along the lines of backup camera or trigger. Um, this this brown one here says back. So I believe that's the one. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this on it. Slide that in and just fold this down. And that should connect the two. Feels like it's made connection. So there we go. All right. So I'm just going to put this back into place. Alright, so before we button any of this stuff up, I think it's a good idea to just test this out. Uh, leaving all this stuff kind of open. I have the back still, if you can see, well, I guess I can't really see back there. I have the back still completely open. And uh, I just want to double check to make sure everything works, that it actually automatically goes into reverse and that we can actually see back there because we might need to adjust the backup camera. All right, so everything looks good there. So if we put this into reverse, this should 
show that back up. <gasps> yeah, there it is. <laughs> awesome. I feel like I can see decently well, but I kind of want to adjust it a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of go back there and dork around with that. All right, so I think I'm a fan of that placement because I can see the bumper a little bit here. I might need to adjust this a little bit more. I'm gonna go back into the settings here. I'm pretty sure this yellow grid isn't the one from the camera. I think this is something from the Phoenix Automotive. So we'll click on settings here. Settings, I think user settings. Um, track line, maybe track line. Let's try that. So track line, we'll turn that to off. And let's hit save and reboot and see if that ends up being the fix. All right, we're rebooted again. If we throw it into reverse, let's see if those lines still show. Okay, cool. The lines are now gone and I like that. That is much better. All right, so after dorking around with this camera a little bit and testing it out, I realized it looked a little bit backwards in the camera view and I thought, oh, I need to cut one of those wires. So in the directions here, that came with it. I should have probably just read it. Uh, it says here that if you want to have a backup camera uh, you need to actually cut the white wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and snip this. So you got the uh, green and the white. Let's go test it out and see how that looks. All right, so that looks way better now. I just need to make sure you cut that white wire if you want it to be a rear-facing camera. Uh, you can also cut the green one if you want the guidelines. I'm not gonna go with the guidelines, so I left that one intact. Overall, I'm really impressed with the quality of the camera. The 170 degrees of view makes a big difference for me. I think the clarity of the footage is really good. I know a lot of you have been begging for me to do a video on this, and I'm sorry it took me so long to finally get around to it but I'm glad I did. I'm so happy to have this backup camera now and I really hope that this helps a lot of you out who had been asking questions. Looks like the Phoenix Automotive head unit is compatible with a lot of these aftermarket cameras. Really just make sure you get the 12 volt compatible camera off of Amazon or eBay. Pick your camera of choice. There's plenty for night vision and there's some with LEDs. This one claims to have night vision so I'm gonna check that out and see if it looks decent. Um, but Go ahead and, and either go with the camera I selected or pick out one that's maybe your favorite. So if you like the content of this video, give me a thumbs up down below and also let me know what videos you guys want to see coming up in the future. I got plenty more stuff coming up. I'm going to be doing a headlight restoration and it looks like most of you have voted to do the cars and coffee so I'm going to be doing that here in October. So look out for the cars and coffee notifications. I'm going to be posting stuff on YouTube and also on Instagram with the details and the dates on that. So we'll meet at the end of the next month and we'll talk cars and coffee and give you some channel updates along the way. So if you're new to the channel and you're interested in seeing more GX470 content, hit the subscribe button because you'll get notifications whenever I upload new content. So I'm going to end things here. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.